I guess, first of all, welcome back to this region. I know you've never coached in South Dakota before, but what does it feel like to sort of just be back in an area that you're very familiar with? Well, it's exciting. In fact, on the drive out here with my kids, they're pointing things out they remembered from uh, billboards that they remembered to space aliens, to Zorbas, to you know, all kinds of things. And there's a, there's a comfort and a familiarity with this that uh, is, is just really special and it, it's really good for me and my family during a time where it's it's a it's a move and uh, we, to be back in proximity to so many people that we know and we love this is going to be a lot of fun. Obviously during mid-June there aren't really a lot of coach openings so to speak yeah. ar around the country. What about Northern State made it attractive to you? What made you want to apply to be the head coach here? Well the, the thing that kept, I kept coming back to is they've just always been good. I mean, every coach here has has done something legendary, has done something that has made people uh, say, that's a program, not, not a team, a program. Um, you look at this job, not only relative to the rest of this league, but relative to even uh, a bunch of Division I programs, we've got a lot here. We've got a lot to sell here. And... Uh, Again, between the tradition and what they've done here, between what we currently have here, uh, I just really thought we could have success here and move, and move this thing forward. Obviously, one of your coaching mentors, coaching heroes, Tim Miles, lives in or grew, excuse me, grew up in Dolan, which is about an hour from here. How much did his word, did his influence, not only to get you the job but inspire you to to take this job? Well, I've, Miles has been regaling with regaling me of stories of of. Aberdeen and Northern States since I've known him. So uh, to, his influence was huge. And, and not only that, it was huge on the other end too, talking to people on this and trying to reassure them that I would be a good fit here. Uh, I wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for Miles, no question about it. And don't tell him that because I don't want him to get a big head. Oh, of course, we're not okay. recording or anything like yeah, that. Exactly. So. Yeah. so being back in Division II, you're, you're vaguely familiar. You were, as you mentioned, you were a grad assistant at Wayne State back in the 90s, but you haven't been a Division II coach, whether it's an assistant or head coach, for, for essentially 20 years. Yeah. Is, there, is there any sort of adjustment period or adjustment that you have to do as a Division II coach as opposed to a D1 coach? Well, the, the only adjustment is quite literally the, the scholarship equivalencies and the fact you can break up scholarships, and I, I have not done that personally yet. But other than that, honestly, I'm going to coach my team the same way. Uh, coaching is coaching, and the idea that I still get to pick my own players by, by <laughs> offering them money, scholarships, not not cash money, but scholarship no, the, the, money. The right kind of The money. right kind of money, uh, not FBI money. Uh, <laughs> that, that, that's essentially the same as Division I. Like I say, there will be an adjusted period, okay, how do I want to allocate these scholarships to get the most out of my roster? But at the core of it, you know, I, I'm going to be picking kids out that, that, let's face it, a lot of the kids that I had at North Dakota State that had success didn't have a lot of Division I offers. And, you know, if we get kids around that caliber here, I think we can do some special things at Division II. Obviously, your last five years were at Ohio University. Contract wasn't renewed. I know you had some injuries that you dealt with. I know there was obviously, you know, whether it was miscommunication or whatever you want to call it, obviously you were able to coach out your contract and they just decided not to renew it. Yep. How were you able to just maintain a positive attitude and continue coaching your team with all the uncertainty that surrounded you? Well, the, the bottom line is, is that, and I, I told my guys this as we were going through it during the year, you're going to deal with stressors during your life from, from different areas, from different things that happen. And, you know, you're going to have days where you go into work where there was a problem at home before you, a, a sick child, a, a, a wife that uh, is struggling with something, and how you're able to fend that off and focus on what you're doing is important. The bottom line is I had a group of seniors down there that regardless of what I was going through was the only senior year they're ever going to have. And I knew I was going to coach. I knew I was going to coach again regardless of what happened. Uh, I didn't know where, I didn't know when, but I knew this wasn't it and I tried not to be I try to take the drama out of it for the most part. And if I succeeded, if I failed, that's for anybody else to say. But I do know this, that I, I'm proud of the way that my young men handled it back there. And uh, I'm looking forward to, to starting the new chapter.
most people who watch our network are familiar with you from your time at North Dakota State. But for those unfamiliar, what does a Saul Phillips-led basketball team look like? What's your personality? What's your strategy? What's your style? Well, hopefully this year they look a lot like Northern State did last year. That'd be, that'd be good for everybody, right? <laughs> but uh, my personality, I, I'm a big player development coach. I bring kids in, they get better. Uh, I had three kids at North Dakota State that had no other Division I scholarship offers, and they turned into Player of the Year in the Summit League. Uh, so it's all about development. It's all about getting kids better, getting them to achieve things that maybe they didn't even know themselves they could do at the beginning. And uh, Discipline, take care of the basketball, take good shots, play for each other, uh, more about the team than the individual. I know Northern State is one of the higher ups in terms of Division II. It's one of the class schools in terms of a basketball school in Division II. But of course, you've been a Division I head coach for the past decade plus. So there might be some who wonder, well, why is he taking a Division II head coaching job? Is he looking for this to take a step eventually back up to D1? What's your response to that? What do you want to accomplish here in Aberdeen? Well, people that would think that don't know me. Uh, I went to Ohio University thinking it was going to be the last stop I made until my kids graduated high school. And I've always wanted to be at a place where uh, I could give stability to my family. Uh, I'm all about quality of life. And part of quality of life for me is winning. I hate to say it, but it is. I'm happier when I win. Go figure. As most people Yeah, are. I was going to say. Uh, I can win here. I can raise my kids in an in a atmosphere that, that they can be comfortable, safe, happy, and they can thrive. Uh, it's just it's way too comfortable of a, of a fit for me to be thinking anything other than let's see how long we can get this done and how far we can move this forward. This has not been a stepping stone job for anyone that's ever been here. Uh, and it would, be, it would be disingenuous for me to think of it as that for me. It's, that's silly. I, I just want to coach. I can coach here and succeed. I can coach here and build on a tradition. I can coach here and follow in the footsteps of legends. That's enough for me. It really is. I was going to say, you've been a coach in some capacity essentially every year except for the time where you were you know, a, a, you know, an administrator at Wisconsin for 20 plus years. Is coaching just kind of in your DNA? How would you explain it? Yeah, I've had a team since I've been in fourth grade. Uh, <laughs> that, that's the way I looked at it. And uh, ever since I, I knew that, ever since it dawned on me that I'd have to work for a living, all I wanted to ever do for that job was to coach basketball. And I truthfully never feel like I've worked a day. Never felt like I've worked a day in my life. I love what I do, and if don't don't tell my administrators this, but if if I had to do it for free, I'd still do it, right? I, I just yeah. We're not it. recording again. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, they. Uh, I love to coach. That's what I love to do. My retirement plan is to die on the bench. Uh, this is this is great. I I can't wait to keep just get going. And as I mentioned, Northern State, not just any D2 school, everyone knows about the attendance, that they've led Division II in attendance for over a decade. You're getting Walks Arena refurbished. You're going to have a new floor. You're going to have a new scoreboard. You're going to have a lot of attractive things. This is the back-to-back -back NSIC tournament champions. How do you build on that? Well, first of all, it isn't about me building anything. It's about continuing the tradition of the program. Uh, I can guarantee you that I can coach here for as long as I want, and I'm not going to have a marble bust like Don Meyer has sitting in, in the office in there. I'm, I'm hoping for a sock puppet or something similar, right? I, I, I'm not trying to outdo anyone. I'm trying to make sure that this program moves forward. Uh, very boldly, I'll say this. What's the next step for this program? The next step's a national championship, and that's got to be the target. Now, that's not easy, but it is doable from here. And I don't think any, I mean, came within a possession a couple years ago. Uh, certainly other schools from this league have, have won the national championship. So you look at it, that's got to be the target. But I don't say that lightly, like, oh, we're going to come in and win championships. No, it's work, and it's, it's hard work. But I think it's attainable. And that's, again, one of the things that really made this job attractive to me. What are your thoughts just on the NSIC in general? It's a lot different than the last time you were around in the mid-'90s. Yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely grown by leaps and bounds and very healthy league, uh, a lot of great institutions. And from a coaching standpoint, Shoot, I know almost all of them personally. It's going to be a lot of a lot of friendships rekindled and uh, maybe some damaged over the course of competition. But the bottom line is, it'll all be a lot of fun. We've got two former NDSU coaches and yourself and Tom Billiter coaching at Augustana. When you guys meet up this season, what's what's that going to be like coaching across from someone who shares that bond with you? Well, and I I know him very well. I 
maybe we'll both get tossed early in the game and go have a beverage somewhere, right? Uh, no, it, it, that's going to be. We're broadcasting the game, so that would be tremendous television entertainment value. You can you bring a camera back in the, the back room where we're having the beverages, too. Okay, so, yeah, yeah, absolutely. As long, no, as, I, as long as you both allow it, that's fine. I, uh, Tom's, a, Tom's a great coach and a great friend, and uh, we have a lot of mutual friends. Uh, we'll call it the Kelby Krabinoff Bowl. It'll be. Uh, I'm sure he'll have a great deal of interest in that one. But the bottom line is, is that we will compete against each other at the end of the day. I, I love him. He loves me. We've been, we've grown really, really close over some, some similar backgrounds and uh, that'll continue. But again, for 40 minutes, we'll try to be beating tar out of each other. I'm assuming you've met with, with most members of the team. What, what's your first interaction been like with them? What did you tell them as far as, you know, looking forward to the next season because, as I mentioned earlier, June is a, is a very rare time for a new head coach to, in college basketball. Yeah, retire. well, the first thing was, uh, guys, okay, l listen, if there was any doubts, any panics, that's over. This is, this is finalized. It moved very fast. Your administration did a great job of taking care of this uh, so that, that we can move ahead. Uh, and then also a reassurance that I don't want to come in and just rip everything up and change everything. I think that would be silly of me given the, the success they've had doing what they did. I've got to try to adapt myself to their system, to Paul's system, and see what I get out of that. And there'll be, there'll be room for me to do things here and there, but you know, I think a lot of it is, is me acclimating myself to them as well. And uh, I've, I've got to concede some things uh, that I've done in the past just because it wouldn't make any sense to do right away. So it'll, there'll be a gradual shifting. I, first of all, I agree a lot with what a lot of a lot of their system. I, I like the shots they, they got. I liked how they got them. I liked the distribution of points. I liked a lot of things about what they did. So uh, there, isn't a, there isn't a need or a want to come in and just rip everything apart. Let's work together. And, and to let the guys know that I'm open-minded enough that uh, I can slide a little bit toward them too. And they'll have, to be, they'll have to be patient to put up with some transition, but maybe not as much as it would have been if they hadn't have been successful. They, they've earned that right. Then the last thing I'll ask you, just, just personally, one of my favorite memories of you, you were playing at North Dakota State, you were playing South Dakota State Old Bison Sports Arena, and it was 2014, I think it's Lawrence Alexander is diving for a loose ball, and he falls sort of right at your feet, and you just like shake him on the ground and just show how happy and proud you are of him. Is that emblematic of, of just who you are and how you want people to think of you as a guy who encourages and loves his team? Well, and I can promise you this, I do that during practice too. Uh, I uh, I love my players. I absolutely love my players, and uh, I love watching him succeed. And to see that particular play, I remember it very, very well. Uh, he ended up sliding right at my feet, and I kind of dog piled right on top of him. And uh, Lawrence was a special kid to me, and that was that emotion was was me. You can't just call time out and hug him, right? I mean, that probably isn't the right play, but that that was that was me expressing my my love for all things Lawrence Alexander at that moment. I, I am very passionate about what I do. I don't apologize for that. And I'm very passionate about the players that, that wear, wear the uniforms that we represent. And uh, throughout this whole process, throughout coaching, the, the thing I've always taken the most pride in is the relationships that I've had with the young men that have played for me. I, I know one of the things that's really neat about this move is I get to reconnect with a lot of people that I'm, that we went to battle together with. Uh, you know, going into hostile gyms, trying to win championships. Those things form bonds that, that can't be faked and they can't be they can't be hatched overnight. They have to happen through experience, and that's why I look forward to going through this team with.